chapter eight, which is called confidence intervals, starts out with the basic problem of you have a population, and you'd like to basically know something about the average of that population. It could be the average anything, average age, average weight, average height, average number of children in the family. And we do it by taking a sample within the population, hopefully a random representative sample, but as a separate issue. We pick a sample size, which itself is a challenge, how to figure out the proper sample size. We'll talk about that perhaps in the future. You take the average of the sample, and you get a number, let's say 20.5. And in order to use all the formulas, we need to know, in this case, for the Z formula, we have to assume that, assume that the sigma is known in the case of the random number. So it's 2.87, but it's for this example, let's make believe. It's, again, I'm just making up a number, but it, has to, it stands for the population standard deviation as a specific number. And what we did last time is we, we talked about in class, in fact, you guys gave me the formula. Um, I didn't uh, teach it to you. I said the formula says you've got to start out with the basic X bar. You make yourself a little bit bigger to give you some insurance on the high side. You make it a little bit smaller. And what, how much bigger and smaller? It depends upon this, the spread of the numbers. It just depends upon how many numbers you have, which the two of them together are called the standard error of the mean. And it also depends upon the z-score, which is going to correspond to I should have put down the question. Find a, let's say, 95% to be specific, but it could be 90 or, or 99 or something similar. Uh, percent confidence interval estimate of mu. That's the question. Every question will start out with the same basic structure. And in order to answer the question, you need to know the X bar, the spread of the numbers, the size of the sample, and the degree of confidence gets translated into a z-score by your knowledge of the z-table, which we did last time. So that we applied it in class, uh, I think, to this example, and we got a number. But now I'm going to apply it to the spinner assignment. What is the mu? With it? Not a, the population will be the, the random number table, which is a big table of millions of numbers in the back of the book, theory, hypothetically. And somebody would like to know, what is the average of the table? Now, we know, of course, the average is 4.5, which is why this assignment is a valuable exercise, because you know the answer before you start. The average is 4.5. I'm sorry, the average of the random number table is what we're trying to find. So let's see, in fact, how accurate this method is. So we're going to take, and then we know the sigma is 2.87 for the case of the random number table. We know that from early parts of the spinner assignment. And the case, instead of taking a sample of a large number, which is more realistic, let's take a small sample of five numbers, because five numbers, the calculation goes quickly. And you guys already did, if you did any, any of the parts of the spinner assignment, you've been taking samples of five numbers repeatedly for, for the last several weeks. So what's the average going to come out to? Well, who knows? Somebody might get a 4.8, another person might get a 3.6, another person might get a 2.4. You know, it's whatever you get. But what I want you to do right now in class is, and of course for the spinner assignment number 20, again, here's where I got to get you to, to um, I got to ca carry through my threat that I gave you in the email instead of, uh, again, we're doing spinner assignment number 25. What degree of confidence am I asking for in 25, in the Kia? Thank you very much, 80%. So we're finding, we're gonna change this 95 to a slightly unrealistic low number, usually so in the 90s, but this is 80%, the same formula works. And again, I'm, Nakia, thank you for your, uh, this is for you, Nakia. Okay, thank you. Um, so let's apply it right now in class. Now the reason why we're gonna do this is the following. We have about, I don't know, 10, 15, 10 people here. I'm going to hopefully get 10 people to plug in these numbers. Now, everybody's going to get the same Z number, the same sigma, and the same N, because sigma is 287 for everybody, N is 5 for everybody, and the Z is when you make the little T di Z diagram, which we'll talk about in a few minutes to remind you how to do it, the Z is going to be the same for everybody. The only thing that differs from person to person to person is the five random numbers that generate the random average, but then after everybody gives me, does the calculation hopefully correctly, I'm going to put their answers on the board to do spinner assignment. Nakia, what number is this again? What we're we talking about? 25. Where you're going to tell me the pair of numbers, I'm going to plot it on this graph, and most, most of the people should, in fact, say the average of 4.5 is somewhere between those two limits. We'll see it more concretely in a second. So let's just do it. So before you can do the calculation, you need to know the Z. To do the Z, I'm going to remind you with the same picture that was videotaped on. Monday, but you make a Z diagram, you make two vertical lines, 
You indicate that between those two lines is the percentage of confidence, because the X bars follow the bell-shaped curve from the central limit there. And that leads immediately that this piece here is 10%, because remember, 80 plus 10 plus 10 is going to be 100. Or if you want a formula for this, 1 minus the 80 divided by 2, because there are two of them. So it's 20% on the outside, but there are two of them, so it's 10%. And if you look up 10% to the back of the Z table, which I told you, again, to bring to class, and I threatened to throw you out. Now, I may not carry out my threat immediately, but again, at some point, they will get. Uh, so if you look up 10% to the back of the Z table, now let me just pick on some victims here. Okay. Um, Sky, do you, do you have a Z table with you, or you have it? You have it built. You have it online. I do. Yeah. Well, so first is online. The whole book is online. What? The whole book is online. All right, uh, uh, David, you have it. So it's going to be negative 1.28. And again, all I can do is, uh, remember I told you 1.29 also might work, 1.275. 1 and that, of course, means positive 1. But the point is that 1.28 gets plugged into the formula. So everybody will have a minus 1.28 here, or, or, or and the plus or minus makes the minus sign irrelevant. The bottom line is if you have the table in front of you and you care enough to look it up and you can't find the 1.28, you can. I'll be glad to come to your seat to. Um, help you find it, but if you don't care enough to bring the table to class or you don't care enough to look at it, I can't help you. So anybody have a question about where the 1.28 came from? Yes? You're looking for 10%. You want not, not on the side of the table, because that's we want to find the inside for 0. 0.1000, or, but maybe you might not find this. You find 1.001, whatever closest to 10%. You find it yet? OK. so. So, so what I'd like you to do right now, so that's, now everybody knows the three numbers that got to be plugged in. Now, the only question is, what's the X bar? So I want you to right now go to the back of the, you, have, you get the X bar three or four different ways. You turn to the back of the book, the ran, if you have the book with you, the random number table, which is the page before the Z table. You put your finger down randomly and just look at the five numbers and add them all up and divide by five. You're going to get a 4.8, or but don't make it up. If you make it up, it's going to mess everybody up. Or go to your spinner assignment, which, by the way, you gave me. So if you want it back, I'll be glad to give it back to you. you just come up here and take your look at any one of those many. You already took 200 averages. So just take any one of them and pick one at random. Don't pick, you know, pick the first one, pick the middle one. I want you to pick a, literally a random average, but not by doing this in your head. If you're doing it in your head, it really truly it turns out it messes it up. So uh, how many people have a random average to use? Because again, they, um, all right, if you guys don't want to cooperate, you don't have to cooperate. But uh, well, you don't have to. Whatever. I want you so basically take take do basically do spinner assignment 25 right now in class by picking five random numbers, getting the average, plugging it into this formula, and telling me after all is said and done that my interval is somewhere like like 1.76 to 7.42, whatever it turns out to be. Give me the pair of numbers that let's say you got a 7.2, which just happens on you know five, three or four or five percent of the time. That person's interval will be from here to here. That means that person. I'm 80 percent confident that it's between here and here. But that person would be wrong because he, the, the real answer is down here, 4.5. So the point is, you're not going to be right 100% of the time. You'll be right 80% of the time. In other words, you're going to get 4 out of 5, which is 80%, will get it right. And, when, and you know, somebody might get an answer down here, which I don't want to mess up the board with. But it could be, you know, so if we get 10 people cooperating, you're going to get 8 people getting it right and 2 people getting it, getting it wrong. If we had 100 people doing it, 80 will get it right and 20 will get it wrong. Now, does it mean exactly 80 out of 100? No. You may get 82, you may get 79, you may get, but it's, you know, the theory is saying that that's what it means. So when I say I'm 80% confident, you can say if, if I would repeat the process, this is important because there's a couple of verbal questions I'd ask you to say this. What does it mean to be 80% or 95% confident? I'll say 80%. It means if I would repeat the process 100 times. Now, in real life, you don't. You just do it one time. You don't take 100 samples. Take one sample, and you do your calculations. But if I would, if I would repeat it 100 times, and I get 100 different intervals, because each time you get a different average, 80 out of 100 of those intervals will cover the mu. That's what it means more fundamentally to say I'm 80% confident. It means I'll be right 80% of the time, recognizing I'll be wrong 20% of the time. 
So why would I use a technique that's wrong 20% of the time? You wouldn't. You try to make 